Bring it up. All the way. You guys have never seen a truck like this before. Dad, you can't keep spending money on junk. I don't think it's a truck at all. I think we just found a transformer. Dad! I'm gonna ask you this once. Where is Optimus Prime? Well, we have yet another Transformers movie in the books. The franchise that will not die. Just will not go away, no matter how bad the critics seemingly want it to. Uh, now, I trust I don't have to tell most of you my opinions on the previous films in the franchise, but for those of you who might be new and haven't seen my Cinematic Extrament episodes on those movies, uh, the first movie... I think it's okay. I don't think it's a great movie by any means, but I don't hate it. Uh, the second movie, Revenge of the Fallen, was a piece of shit. But I kind of understand why it was that way, because that was made around the same time as the writer's strike, and they pretty much had to churn out a script in about a week. I think they were still writing the script while they were filming it, for the most part, so I get why that one was a mess. I don't know what their excuse was for Dark of the Moon, the third movie, because that sucked as well. Wasn't quite as bad, but it was close. And then that brings us to the fourth movie, which I was hearing so many bad things about going into it. I tried to avoid going into any detailed reviews because I wanted to at least attempt to keep an open mind, but I did see the Rotten Tomatoes score and watched it just go down and down and down and down and down over the days. And I think it got as low as 13% at one point. It went back up. It's uh, 17 at the time of this recording, which is still the lowest of any of the Transformers movies. This is the most critically panned of the franchise that will not die. And also, I was dreading it because not only is it getting critically panned, but it's two hours and 45 minutes long. And I was going in there prepared for two hours and 45 minutes worth of suck. And now that I have sat through all two hours and 45 minutes of this fourth film in the franchise that will not die, it's actually not that bad. I'm not shitting you. I honestly, I don't think it was that bad. I, I'm surprised I, that I, I'm thinking as highly of this movie as I do. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still not a good movie. It's trash. It is still trash, just like the other movies in the series, but it's at least enjoyable trash, if that makes sense. Uh, but it, there's a lot of things about it that I don't like, little details here and there, but honestly, it has enough good stuff in there that I was able to enjoy it. Um, now, some of the problems, the story still is as much of a mess as any of the other movies. It still has a lot of aspects that don't make any sense. Uh, it's still too goddamn long. I mean, that, that two hours and 45 minute runtime it did not need to be that long. There was plenty that they could have trimmed out of there. Plenty. It did not need to be that long. For example, uh, the heroes of this story, basically there's Mark Wahlberg, uh, Nicola Peltz, and who was the other guy who plays Nicola Peltz's boyfriend? Jack Rayner, an actor I'm not terribly familiar with. And Really, I haven't really bothered to pay any attention to their names. I have them listed in my notes here as the hero, the hero's daughter, and the douchebag boyfriend. And that's really all they are. And, and there's a fourth character in there, at least for the beginning of the movie, who is uh, played by T.J. Miller, and I just have him listed as the comedy sidekick, because that's all he does. Every single line that comes out of this character's mouth is a comic relief line. That's all he says. Like, even when their lives are on the line, they're getting shot at and they're about to die, he's still cracking jokes. I'm just, what the fuck? It's like, and, and they're not all bad. It's, he's got a few legitimately funny lines in there, here and there, but after a while, it just gets old. Like, dude, say, say something that's not funny. Just one line. Just one. Can't do it. 
Uh, but, but shockingly, he's not in the entire movie. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say why to avoid spoilers, but yeah, they actually do not keep him around, which surprised me. Uh, the douchebag boyfriend, they do keep around, and they really didn't need to because he is completely useless. I mean, really, he's just there so Mark Wahlberg's character has someone to hate because he doesn't approve of his daughter dating anyone for various reasons that have nothing to do with the plot at all. Um, it's more stuff they could have cut to trim down the runtime, but yeah, and most of their dialogue is just him, you know, trying to mess with the guy and... I just don't care. Really don't. Because he is a useless character, although the movie almost seems to be aware of this. Because anytime they're in, like, a big action sequence, he either, you know, just acts like a complete coward and just cuts and runs, or on occasion when he does try to fight, he completely fucks it up. And even when they're first being chased by uh, the big bad government guys in this movie... It's really Nicola Peltz that's telling him what to do while he's driving the getaway cars. Like, turn here! Now go up this ramp! Now go over here! Like, do this! Do that! All this. And, but yeah, really, he is not in control at all. So, uh, also, their relationship was a little bit creepier than I think the movie intended it to be. There's a scene early on, after Mark Wahlberg finds out that they're dating, and he asks how old the kid is, and he says he's 20, and his daughter is 17, and he's wondering, he's like, is this even legal, what you two are doing here? And he said, no, 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 it's cool, because we were dating when we were still both in high school, and Texas has this Romeo and Juliet statute on the books that says, you know, as long as we were dating, we were both underage, it's still okay if we're still within a certain age gap in here. He even has a copy of this statute on a fucking business card that he keeps in his pocket. I'm not kidding. This... This is actually an entire scene in the movie revolves around this, and, like, the more they try to focus on it, the creepier it seems. And I don't think that's what they were going for. I think that scene was meant to be comedy. It re Maybe it's just me. It really didn't seem funny at all. It's just, like, you're trying way too hard, especially since, again, this has no effect on the plot. It doesn't need to be here. You could have just said her character was 18, and that would have been the end of it. Or, hell, I think the the age of consent in Texas might be 17, actually, so it still would have been okay. And in real life, a relationship like this, where they were dating in high school previously and just, you know, kind of grew up together and are still dating even after one of them is legally an adult, wouldn't be that creepy, but they put so much focus on it, I almost have to wonder, who are they trying to convince? Like, what member of the production staff was boning a 17-year-old when he was 20 and is now trying to justify it later on? Just... I think someone might be projecting here. I may be wrong. That's just... I call him like I see him. But anyway. Also, uh, Sophia Miles plays a character in this movie. And I mean, like, in my notes I have Mark Wahlberg as hero, Nicola Peltz as the daughter, and Jack Rayner as the douchebag boyfriend, and so on and so on. Sophia Miles I just have listed as a row of question marks, because I'm not sure what the hell she was supposed to be doing in this movie. She shows up every now and then and appears to have some sort of connection with Stanley Tucci's character, who plays the, uh, the evil corporate bad guy. I'll get into him in a minute, but, uh, yeah, I don't even know why she was there. She doesn't, the movie seemed to be trying to give me the impression that her character is important, but I don't know why. Because she doesn't do anything. Ser uh, th did I miss something? Because may maybe I missed something that was deleted from the movie because they were trying to trim the runtime down. Ugh. But yeah, so that's, I mean, that's most of the bad stuff. But, you know, beyond that, there's still a lot of good stuff going on. For starters... I'm sure you don't need me to tell you this, but Mark Wahlberg is so much better as a hero than Shia LaBeouf. So much better. Shocking, I know, right? <laughs> but no, for one thing, he's not an annoying little shit. He's actually a likable character for the most part. And he's believable as an action hero as well. I mean, Shia LaBeouf, I can't see him as an action hero. Mark Wahlberg... Sure, I mean, this guy wants to pick up some big alien rifle and start shooting at the fucking Decepticons and giving Optimus Prime an assist in his battle with, uh, with Lockdown, who is 
one of the big uh, evil robots in this movie. Sure, you know what? I can buy it. Now, granted, that big alien rifle, the recoil on that thing probably should have knocked him into the next zip code, but you know what? I'll roll with it. Fine. <laughs> you know, I can handle it. Uh, overall, the acting was actually pretty good. And coming from, I mean, two movies worth of Megan Fox and then a third movie with uh, blonde Megan Fox, <laughs> it actually, it was refreshing to see a movie that overall was pretty well acted. Even Nicola Peltz was at least decent in this movie. And for those of you who don't remember, she was Katara in The Last Airbender. Yeah. Uh, she got better, apparently. <laughs> it took her a few years, but yeah, she's actually a decent actress. I think her ass got more screen time than the rest of her in this movie because she is a girl in a Michael Bay movie. Uh, which was weird because... I mean, part of Mark Wahlberg's character is that he doesn't want his daughter to date at all until she graduates high school uh, because of various reasons that, again, have nothing to do with the plot. I guess uh, he had her when, she, when he was 18 and had to miss his own high school graduation because of that, and so he made a promise to her mother, who is now dead because... reasons, that he would make sure she got to her graduation no matter what. And so that was his reason, like, no dating at all, because but I dated before and it got me into trouble. A uh, bit extreme, but okay. But at the same time, he has no problem with her dressing like a girl in a Michael Bay movie. You know, he comments about it every once in a while, but he doesn't actually make any effort to stop her or punish her for dressing like a tramp. No, it's just a few comments offhand here and there, and that's it. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, none of the characters were really overly annoying. The only one who really came close was T.J. Miller, and he's only in about the first third of the movie, if that. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the characters were all pretty good. Uh, uh, Peter Cullen and Frank Welker are back again as Optimus Prime and Galvatron, roles that they have played before, roles they are both very familiar with, and they slip back into them with no trouble whatsoever. Uh, John Goodman also voices one of the Autobots in this movie, a guy named Hound, who is basically this big military type who has a love of heavy artillery. He was pretty awesome in this, and it's actually kind of refreshing to see an Autobot that's not Optimus Prime or Bumblebee get some significant screen time and actually give this character a chance to shine. I like that, it's especially since he was kind of a fun character. Uh, I guess they figured, hey, we got John Goodman, we might as well use him, and good for them. Uh, the, the villains in this movie, I think they are the ones who really sell this and really keep this from being absolute crap because the, they are so much better than this movie deserves. I mean, you have Stanley... Basically, what they're doing, you have Stanley Tucci as an evil corporate bad guy, Kelsey Grammer as an evil CIA agent, and uh, Titus Welliver as Kelsey Grammer's henchman, basically. And essentially what they're doing is they are... The plot of this movie is they are hunting down all the remaining Transformers on Earth, which are only Autobots now because all the Decepticons have either been killed or uh, just left the planet and pissed off back to Cybertron, I guess. And they're hunting them down so evil corporate guy Stanley Tucci can melt them down and get their basic metal alloy transformium, they call it, and use that to build his own transformers. And they are far much better acted and far more menacing than this movie really has any right to be. Uh, Kelsey Grammer especially, just... That, that dude... He almost seems like he's in the wrong movie. He should be in a much darker film. But he is awesome. Uh, and, and Titus Welliver is also very intimidating. Uh, although he does have one line towards the beginning of the movie that was just bizarre, really. There's a, a point where they're hunting for Optimus Prime, and they got a tip that Mark Wahlberg was hiding him in his barn. If, if you've seen the trailer, you know what I'm talking about. And Mark is all, well, if you want to search my property, I'm going to have to see a warrant. And Titus says, my face is my warrant. Huh? 
<laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? I just, <laughs> like, my face is my warrants. Yeah, well, your face is your mom. I just, just what? <laughs> I, I have no idea what the hell that was supposed to mean. I really don't. Uh, jeez. But, oh, one more thing that I need to talk about, and this is another negative thing about the movie, and this, this is more of a personal thing for me. This, a lot of people probably won't care about this, and I recognize that, but the Dinobots. They come into play towards the end of the movie. I'm sure you've seen them in the trailer. You've seen that picture of the poster with Optimus Prime riding on the back of, Gl of Grimlock, carrying a fucking sword which is simultaneously the dumbest and most awesome thing I have ever seen. But, um, here's the thing. I grew up with a Generation 1 cartoon. I remember the Dinobots quite well. I remember Grimlock quite well. I loved Grimlock when I was a kid. He was awesome. And this movie does not do them justice, and I'll tell you why. Because in the movie, they don't talk. They don't talk. They don't appear to have any significant form of intelligence whatsoever. They are just mindless animals. That's all. That is bullshit. Coming from my inner child, that is bullshit. Because that is part of what made the Dinobots so awesome, and Grimlock in particular, is that they actually had personalities. They weren't just mindless animals. They were simple-minded. They were definitely simple-minded. You know, me, Grimlock, smash Decepticons! Yeah. But still, that was part of what made them cool. And this movie just shits all over it, because they, they don't talk at all. They have no personality. They're just animals. That's it. They look cool. I will give them that. They look cool. I like their designs. But they just ruin the characters. No. No. Aaron Kruger, Michael Bay, what are you doing? Fuck you. You ruined my Dinobots, man. No. Uh, not enough to completely ruin the movie for me, but God, I did not like that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything I have to say about The Age of Extinction. Uh, honestly, I think it's the best movie in the franchise so far. It, it still has a lot of problems, but I didn't hate it. I really didn't. Uh, as for whether I would recommend this, whew, that's always a tough question to answer when I know I'm talking about a movie that I don't hate, but I can still admit is crap. Uh, it's, I mean, if you're a fan of any of the first three movies, you will almost certainly like this one as well. If you're not a huge fan of the previous films in the franchise, but you do like seeing a big, dumb action movie once in a while, I would say it's at least worth paying the matinee price. I still can't believe I'm saying this. I'm giving a recommendation to people to see a Transformers movie, a Michael Bay Transformers movie. But here we are. It's... It's not that bad. Maybe it's just because I set my expectations really low. That could be part of it. And there was much that could have been improved, but you know what? It's okay. I, I can't bring myself to hate this one. I just can't. There's still a lot to hate, and I probably will make a cinematic excrement episode out of this eventually when the DVD hits, because I did it with the first three movies. I kind of have to. But you know what? Plunk down the matinee price. You can forego the 3D surcharge, I think. I saw it in 2D. Didn't feel like I missed anything, but... Yep, honestly, it's worth seeing. Still can't believe I'm saying that. Oh well, it is what it is. Take care. We need a new army.